welcome my dear students for standard 7th general science students today we will be doing with chapter number 4 nutrition in living organisms module 1 my name is ms jagjit kaur students before beginning with this module let us discuss what are the learning objectives so in this module you will be learning about what is nutrition and the types of nutrition then what is autotrophic nutrition what is the transport system in plants and the biological fixation of nitrogen atmospheric fixation of nitrogen and what is symbiotic nutrition students let's recall what we have studied in 6th standard so just tell me what is malnutrition yes malnutrition occurs when all the nutrients that the body needs are not obtained in the proper proportions from the diet Next question which are the ways to prevent malnutrition Correct malnutrition can be prevented by taking a balanced diet and avoiding the deficiency of any nutrient Now students let's learn about nutrition As we all know that some life processes go on continuously in living organisms and the substances which are digested and assimilated for obtaining energy and for the growth and health of our body are called as foodstuffs and the nutrients which we get from foodstuffs can be classified into macronutrients and micronutrients now what are macronutrients macronutrients are required in large quantity for example carbohydrates proteins fats and what are micronutrients micronutrients are required in very small quantity for example minerals and vitamins and the process of taking in and using food which takes place in living organisms is called as nutrition now students what is the need for nutrition yes nutrition is necessary to supply the energy required for doing work also it is necessary for the growth and development of the body nutrition is necessary to replace the damaged cells and repair tissues and also it is necessary to fight diseases and students nutrition is of two types that is autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition now what is autotrophic nutrition the organisms which can produce their own food and thus nourish themselves is called as autotrophic nutrition and what is heterotrophic nutrition the organisms which depend on other organisms plants or animals for their food is heterotrophic nutrition now students let's learn about autotrophic plants so before that tell me how do plants prepare their own food yes plants prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis In photosynthesis plants make their food in leaves with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll using water and nutrients from the soil and carbon dioxide from the air and the process of photosynthesis can be represented by the following equation that is 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll forms C six H twelve O six and six O two is given out. That means carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll forms food that is in the form of glucose and oxygen is given out. 
and also plants convert light energy into chemical energy and store it in the form of food and students water minerals and salts are absor absorbed by roots from the soil and transported to the leaves by the stem and the leaves have microscopic openings called stomata through which carbon dioxide from the air enters into the leaf and also the chloroplast present in leaves contain chlorophyll chlorophyll absorbs sunlight and helps to convert carbon dioxide and water into food and oxygen is released during the process of photosynthesis and students even photosynthesis also takes place in some other parts like green stem as they contain chlorophyll now students let's learn about the transport system in plants so the transport system of plants consists of the xylem and the phloem now what is xylem xylem is a tube in a plant stem that carry water from the roots to the leaves and it helps to transport minerals water to all the aerial parts of the plants now what is phloem phloem is made of sieve tube elements and the companion cells and it helps to transport the food that is glucose from the leaves to other parts of the plant where it is either consumed or stored also plants have the transport system but they do not have a separate digestive or excretory system now students i let you know about chemosynthesis you know that chemosynthesis is the conversion of inorganic carbon containing compounds into organic matter such as sugars and amino acids chemosynthesis uses energy from inorganic chemicals to perform this task and the term chemosynthesis comes from the root words chemo which means chemical and synthesis which means to make its function is similar to that of photosynthesis which also turns inorganic matter into organic matter but uses the energy of sunlight instead of chemical energy to do so and today chemosynthesis is used by microbes such as bacteria and archaea because chemosynthesis alone is less efficient than photosynthesis or cellular respiration it cannot be used to power complex multicellular organisms and also a few multicellular organisms live in symbiotic relationships with chemosynthetic bacteria making them a partial energy source giant tube worms for example host chemosynthetic bacteria which supply them with sugars and amino acids so students now let us see what are the functions of chemosynthesis chemosynthesis allows organisms to live without using the energy of sunlight or relying on other organisms for food like chemosynthesis it allows living things to make more of themselves by turning inorganic molecules into organic molecules the processes of chemosynthesis turn non living matter into living matter today it is used by microbes living in the deep oceans where no sunlight penetrates but it is also used by some organisms living in sunny environments such as iron bacteria and some soil bacteria some scientists believe that chemosynthesis might be used by life forms in sunless extraterrestrial environments such as in the oceans of europa or underground environments on mars 
then it has been proposed that chemosynthesis might actually have been the first form of metabolism on earth with photosynthesis and cellular respiration evolving later as life forms became more complex we may never know for sure if this is true but some scientists believe it's interesting to consider the sunlight or chemical energy was the first fuel for life on earth now students let's recall which are the different substances excreted by plants and why we know that excretion is a characteristic of living organisms and accumulation of excretory substances for longer time may affect the normal functioning of the body like animals plants do not have specific organs for excretion thus waste substances are stored in the leaves which are then shed along with leaves in a specific season sticky substances such as resins gums latex are the excretory products of plants students now let's understand about synthesis of other nutrients by plants as we know that plants produce carbohydrates by the process of photosynthesis then carbohydrates are made from carbon hydrogen and oxygen proteins are made from carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen and also plants cannot utilize the gaseous nitrogen present in air thus it needs to be fixed that is it should be converted into nitrogen compounds and nitrogen is fixed by biological as well as atmospheric methods so now let's learn about biological fixation of nitrogen students biological fixation is carried out by two different types of microorganisms that is rhizobium and azotobacter now let's see what is rhizobium rhizobium is a genus of bacteria associated with the formation of root nodules on plants these bacteria live in symbiosis with legumes they take in nitrogen from the atmosphere and pass it on to the plant allowing it to grow in soil low in nitrogen now what is azotobacter azotobacter are aerobic free living soil microbes that play an important role in the nitrogen cycle in nature binding atmospheric nitrogen which is inaccessible to plants and releasing it in the form of ammonium ions into the soil that is nitrogen fixation root nodules of leguminous plants contain microorganisms like rhizobium these microorganisms are capable of absorbing atmospheric nitrogen and converting it into a compound nitrate microorganisms like azotobacter are present in soil and are capable of converting atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates now students let's learn about atmospheric fixation of nitrogen you know in the rainy season due to lightning the atmospheric nitrogen reacts with oxygen and forms nitric oxide and the formula for nitric oxide is no nitric oxide again oxidizes and forms nitrogen dioxide that is no2 the nitrogen dioxide dissolves in rainwater and gets converted into nitric acid and the formula for nitric acid is hno3 then this nitric acid gets added to the soil along with the rainwater it is later absorbed by the plants along with the water now students let's learn about symbiotic nutrition 
Sometimes two or more types of plants live together to fulfill their needs of nutrition, protection, support, etc. by helping each other. And this type of nutrition is called as symbiotic nutrition. Certain fungi live around the roots of plants. These plants provide nutrients to the fungi and in return, fungi provide minerals and water from the soil to the plants. Some fungi and algae live together, for example, lichen. In this, fungi provide water, minerals and shelter to algae. In return, algae provide food to the fungi. So students, this was the end of module 1. Now let us see which are the points to be remembered. So you have to remember that substances which are digested and assimilated for obtaining energy and for the growth and health of our body are called as foodstuffs. And the nutrients can be classified into two types that is micronutrients and macronutrients. The process of taking in and using food which takes place in living organisms is called as nutrition. Nutrition are of two types that is autotropic nutrition and heterotropic nutrition. And plants in the presence of sunlight with the help of chlorophyll, carbon dioxide and water prepares the food for the plants. And this process of making food by plants is called as photosynthesis. And the transport system of plants consists of the xylem and the phloem. The xylem transports minerals and water from root to all aerial parts of the plants. The phloem transports food from the leaves to other parts of the plant. Rhizobium microorganisms and azotobacter microorganisms help in fixation of nitrogen. And two different types of plants live together to fulfill their needs of nutrition, protection, support, etc. With each other's help. This type of nutrition is called symbiotic nutrition. For example, lichen. Now students, there is an assignment for you all. The first question for the assignment is you have to differentiate between autotropic nutrition and heterotropic nutrition. Then the second question, answer in one word. The first question for that is the process of taking in and using food which takes place in living organisms. The second question, the part of leaf which contains chlorophyll. Third question, the gas which is given out in the process of photosynthesis. And the fourth question for answer in one word, microorganism capable of nitrogen fixation and present in root nodules of leguminous plants. And the third question for the assignment, you have to complete the chart with reference to the types of nutrients. Thank you dear students. I will be back with module 2. Till then, goodbye and have a nice day.